International Broadcasting Corporation are connected with the information. The vacuum cleaner line is followed by Lecture on Bird. Howdy, Mr. Collier. Hello, Sonny. Hi, buddy. Hi, Tuts. You don't happen to know where our most worthy and honorable program director is, do you? The great Mr. Burton. I me tre non fal momento i pan po del ire il porto il stato allo il to fa vento don la prova don la prova si lo de morto ma qual rosa in are viva e la sta so the popular Mr. Brett hides out his crop rooms and sings opera. Well, come on a minute. Ah, oh, someday. Someday the world is going to know of another skeeper. Well, a skeeper, that uh, for now. I've uh, written a new song here. I want to play it over for you. Dear, 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 must I listen to the lowly when my soul yearns for the high? Line. You listen to this and love it. I can't say beautifully how I adore you. Like the card with flowers and poetry. I can only say I love you more each day, and every day is Mother's Day to me. For you have been my very special sweetheart since I used to toddle at your knee. Not just one day a year do I keep for you. For every day is Mother's Day to me. I may forget to write, but every night, when all is still, I think of you, and I do everything I think may bring some happiness, Mother. I can't say beautifully how I adore Like the card with flowers and poetry I can only say I love you more each day For every day is Mother's Day Thanks, old man. I hoped you'd like it. Say, your mother's certainly well preserved. My mother. Wait a minute. Come on, sing it with me once. Oh no, no, funny. Now really, it is very, very pretty, but it's not my fault. You see, <clears throat> my mate gave you opera. I'll give you all the opera you want if you just sing this with me once. Oh, very well. But I warn you, my soul will be elsewhere. Must be. I may forget to write, but every night, when all is still, I think of you, and I'll do everything I think may bring some happiness, mother, to you. I can't say beautifully how I adore. Like the card with flowers and poetry, I can only say I love you, Mary Day, and every day is Mother's Day to me. Oh, we had an 
audience. How'd you like it, Sonny? Well, uh, swell. Oh, how would you like to hear it again? Sure. Oh, that is if uh, Mr. Collier sings it. Mm -hmm. uh, but Mr. DuPont would like to see you in his office, Mr. Breton. Oh. And you're wanted in Studio D, Mr. Collier. Thanks, Sonny. Mm -hmm. I have an appointment with Mr. Dufont. You have a seat over there. I'll have one of the boys take you up when he comes. Say. Honey, will you try to be real and human for once in your life? Just see, Dirk, and I won't have you talking to me like that. Okay, I'm just telling you for your own good. I noticed you already risked the information, girl. Just because they wouldn't let you be the prima donna right off the bat, you quit our show. Now you've got a great chance on the radio. Come down off your high horse. Take what they give you. I'll never sing jazz again. Well, so as I am to say it, you're heading for a flop. It's Lee. Wait for me. Oh, I'm sorry I can't. I have a rehearsal. But I'll see you at home later. You might at least wish me luck. Oh, I do, darling. I do. You've got plenty of everything. Just give him a chance to find it out. I'll try. Goodbye. Right this way, Miss Lee. This way. Here you are, Miss Lee. Thank you. This is Studio B, isn't it? Wally Collier! Alanda Lee! Well, when did you get to New York? Two weeks ago. Well, let me look you over. Well? Not bad. Thank you. Go over here and make yourself comfortable while you tell me how come you're in New York and all of these. Where should I begin? Well, you might begin with a dark and stormy night when you were born. But it wasn't dark and stormy. I remember just the plain. The moon was out. Skip the moon. Begin with John and Georgia. All right. John and Georgia, Atlanta. Two years in a convent. Two years of study. A year on the radio. New York in the end. A little sketchy, do. What were you studying? Well, what would it be? Don't tell me you still want to sing opera. What's the matter with popular stuff? It's cheap. It's tawdry. It's vulgar. But that's what dear old Mr. Public spends his money to hear. Let Mr. Public spend his money on anything he chooses. But I love jazz and I won't sing it. You're sure. I never was more sincere. Then what are you doing at WMDB? I'm going to sing what you so glibly call opera on the La Paloma Hour. No. Yes. Congratulations. But, uh... What about uh, Carmel Prevo? Was she blonde or brunette, Greg? Well, from the look on my face, she must have been a gorgeous redhead. You and your redhead. You know there's nobody in my young life but you, my darling. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Really, I'm serious. You look it. Well, anyway, I always come back, don't I? Which only goes to prove what a fool I am to love you. Do you? Do I? And say, if I thought any of those other women meant anything to you, why, scratch their eyes out. Great, I'll go out and see if I can't find a couple of victims for you. Seems to me you've done rather well so far. <laughs> oh, excuse me, darling. Yes, this is Carmel. I have just been told that I am to accompany Yolanda Lee on the La Paloma Hour. I thought you were set for that. Well, I'm sure you're mistaken, darling. I am set. But Greg DuPont is here right now. Well, if I were you, I would certainly find out about it. Don't you worry, darling. I will. And thanks for calling.
Why the scowl? Who is Elanda Lee? Elanda Lee? I never heard of her. Greg, Helen just phoned me. She told me your father had just found this Elanda Lee to be the white dove of the La Paloma Soap Company's program. But I'm sure she's wrong. I'm not so positive. But you were practically all set. There was only the formality of signing the contract. That's what I thought. Well, what about it, Greg? I can't tell you one way or the other, Carmel. This is as much news to me as it is to you. But then, of course, I haven't been near the studios for the past ten days. Well, you better go near them now. I've spent too much time and too much money to get that job. Besides, I'd be the laughing stock of all our friends if I let some little upstart step in and take it away from under my very nose. Well, I'll breeze down there and see what's what. I'll say you will. And if they have done anything so foolish, you're going to make them change their mind. Oh, Greg. I've taken a lot from you because I love you. Practically, the only thing I ever asked in return was this job. All right, dear. I'll see what I can do. Oh, you didn't tell me. I already know. The white dove of La Paloma. Ever since she spread her wings and flew into our brood, she's had a song of flutter. <laughs> Don't mind me, Miss Lee. I'm only the publicity inventor. I take the smallest detail of your life and magnify it until the luster of your teeth is a fireside topic in the Congo. The curl of your red hair makes Eskimos speak their wives. The color of your pajamas makes statesmen in Geneva tell each other the gospel truth. In other words, I'm Nelson Conway. How do you do, Mr. Conway? Oh, I'll do all right by you. With that red hair and that pair of eyes. I can readily see why an old gander like Mr. Parker chose you to be his little white dove. Isn't that right, Miss Evans? Yes, Mr. DuPont. Mr. DuPont will see you and Miss Lee now. Yeah, uh, before you go in there and sign your life away, Miss Lee, I'd like to give you a word of advice. I'm sure it will be worth heeding, Mr. Connolly. Thank you. Now, the word is this. No matter what you do, aim high. It's just as easy to make friends with Park Avenue as with the Bronx. And it's far better publicity. I'll try to remember that. Come right in, Miss Lee. Won't you sit down? Thank you. You know Mr. Connolly? Yes, I do. I heard it. Landon Lee heard us sing one song, and the little... I don't understand, Miss Lee, that this is a little bit irregular. Yes, I know that. Under normal circumstances, following your audition, you'd been placed in the stock company on a sustaining program. But when a sponsor, particularly a sponsor as important as Parker, insists upon featuring a particular artist where we can only bow to his decision. Say, with Miss Lee's qualities and my technique, there's nothing to it, Mr. DuPont. We'll make this country Lapa Loma soap conscious. We'll put Lapa Loma soap in every eye, on every tongue. Miss Lee will be in every bathroom in America. <laughs> well, that, 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 that's good for a beginning, Connolly. Uh, thank you, sir. You know, it's a great opportunity for you, Miss Lee. I'm sure I can make good. Uh, anything else, Mr. DuPont? That'd be all. Thank you, Connolly. Well, it's not going to work. Draw up a regular contract following Mr. Parker's instructions. And after you've looked over its salient points, why, we'll have it signed in a few moments. Greetings and felicitations, little sunshine. Ah, uh, there's a smile that won't come off. Come, come now. Who's inside with the hardworking head of the DuPont family? The little white dove of La Paloma. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Wait a minute. What's this all about? The last I heard, Karma Pebbles is apparently all set. He was set, but it didn't hatch. Mr. Parker took just one look at Mr. Landolini, heard him sing one song, and the little Georgia Peach was tough. She could have walked off with his head and he'd never have missed it. In fact, I don't believe he was even listening to the music. Well, this is certainly a surprise. What about Dad? Didn't he have anything to say about it? What could he say? Mr. Parker is saying for the broadcast. Ah, Miss Lee must have what it takes. Oh, you go for her, all right. Red hair and all. Ah, uh, red hair happens to be my one and only witness. I'll look her over. May I intrude? I'm sorry, Gregory, I'm busy. Miss Lee, my son, Gregory. How do you do, Mr. DuPont? This is a privilege, Miss Lee. I understand you're joining Dad's big happy radio family. Yes, I am. Well, that's great. I have a feeling that henceforth I'm going to take this broadcasting business more seriously. I doubt if you'll ever take anything seriously, Gregory. After all, why should I? You've made far too much money as it is. Somebody has to put it back into circulation. I'm the official circulator. I see. <laughs> Would you please be good enough to excuse us? I'm very busy. I'm sorry to barge them in this way. I'll, uh, I'll wait outside. 
From now on, Miss Evans, I'm reporting for work every morning at 10. You aren't leaving already, are you? Oh, no, no, I think I'll stick around. Thank you very much, Miss Lee. Next Tuesday at 7 will be the first broadcast of... La Paloma. La Paloma is singing little songs of love. La Paloma Incorporated presents the little white dove. Well, Mr. Parker, are you worried? Yes, I am. Very much worried. Well, you've no reason to be. The little western breeze from over the hills of his singing little songs to me of you. Then there's a host of program till it'll be running just as smooth as clockwork. La Paloma is my life work. The white dove is my badge of honor. My very soul, Mr. Park. My very soul. Dreams on the starlit sky with you. The flowers mark their little heads rhythmically. And smile through the beaming, laughing with joy. The little western breeze My white dove Is singing little songs To me of That was Miss Elanda Lee, the White Dove of La Paloma. And now we will hear from the La Paloma String Trio under the direction of Miss Beatrice Stevens. Oh, I'm laughing for Christmas. Here, Amanda, they ate it up. I tried to make them like you. And they did. I see. In fact, I'm elated. Elated, Mike. I'm so glad you're not disappointed, Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker, you'll we'll see you later. However, in behalf of the board of directors of the La Paloma Soap Company of America and Portland, I take pleasure in congratulating you. And in anticipation of your unbounded success, I hereby christen you our white dove. I have every confidence that our sale of soap will increase in leaps and bounds. At least I hope so. I'm sure they will, Mr. Park. <laughs> well, I'll be <laughs> well, that's the big uh, fancier. Isn't he a scream? Lee. Thank you. 
you better go inside. It's like trouble. Oh, but Greg. Now it's going to be all right. You're a hard man to kill. Is the stick up? Your girlfriend might hear it. All right, let's have it. What's on your mind? It seems you haven't played exactly square with a certain young lady. And she asked us thinking about it. Who? Now, it wouldn't be gallant for us to mention a lady's name in a street fight, would it? Besides, she wants you to have something to remember her by. Oh! Let him alone! Lee? Hi, gorgeous. Hello. Yeah. Seen the papers? I was just reading about it. Okay. Okay. And by the way, over there on the desk, do you find a little contribution to your philanthropic organization? That's great. What's the line? Let's just have a drink. Thanks. Anytime we can do any more little favors for you, give me a ring. Oh, I don't think any more would be necessary. But, of course, you never can tell. <laughs> it's awful. It's impossible. It simply can't go on. Oh, come, come now, Mr. Parker. It can't be as black as you think. It can't be. Well, it's worse. You and your Mr. Connolly. You told me La Paloma Soap would be in every eye, on every tongue. And where is it, Mr. DuPont? In my warehouse. You told me Miss Lee would be in every bathroom in America. And where is she? Running around with your son, getting herself talked about. I'm broken hearted, Mr. DuPont. I asked for a job. And what did you give me? A goose. Oh, please now, Mr. Fox. Don't forget, Miss Lee was your own choice. You went against our better judgment and insisted it be Tyler. Well, don't sit there and throw it up to me. Get rid of her. Break a contract. Break a neck for all I care. For five weeks, I've listened to nothing but scandal and gossip and no sale. That'd have been a whole lot better off for Carmel Prevost. At least when she gets in trouble, she does it in a ladylike way. You show Mr. Breton, I want to see him. Mr. Breton, please. Hello? Mr. Breton doesn't answer in his office. Shall I try and locate him for you? Yes, I will. Oh, say, Mike, have you seen Mr. Breton? Ah! Oh, what the deal of the... Well, what are you snooping around here for? I I wasn't snooping, sir. Mr. DuPont wants you. We've been looking all over the building for you. Well, you certainly must have been snooping, or you wouldn't have found me here. <clears throat> Of course, Mr. DuPont wants to see me, but I guess I'll have to go. <clears throat> well, uh, of course, it's, uh, it Mr. DuPont wants to see me, and I, I uh, guess I'll have to go. Don't play it that way. Play it like this. But I'm the one that's going to sing the song. Well, try it, Marvin. But I like to play it this way. Well, I'm sure this is the way it ought to go. Take off your high hat, come to work. Take my advice for what it's worth. Come off the shelf and be yourself. Take off your high hat, lady. I could really go for you. 
But before I'll show for you, learn to laugh my jokes like common folks. Take off my hat, lady. So your folks arrived on the Mayflower. So your old man has dough. So you're in the social register. So what I'd like to know. Take off your high hat and be humble. See where you're at, for you will stumble. I can see how sweet you'd be. If you take off that high hat, take off that high hat, take off that high hat, lady. Is that the way you feel about it? Well. Why that high hat? Is it my hat? Is that why that high hat? Why do you give me that high hat? Why that high hat? Why that high hat? I found my mind. Why do you give that high hat to me? Listen, honey. For the first time since you came to New York, I've caught a glimpse of the girl I used to know back home. Meaning? You had a sparkle in your eye. You were real. Yourself. I wish you'd be yourself. This business of not wanting to sing jazz and trying to run with Greg DuPont and his crowd are expressions of the same mental attitude. So, I'm being psychoanalyzed. Your being you got with Greg isn't going to do you any good. It'll hurt you, Alanda, and it'll hurt plenty, too. Alanda. And Dixie's advice and everybody else's advice. I'm old enough to know my own mind and to make my own decisions. And what's more, I'm sick of being in the sidelines. I'm going to be at the head of the parade. And believe it or not, I'm going to do it in my own peculiar way. Miss Lee. Yes? Mr. Bretton would like to see you in his office. Thanks. Come in, please. And they open the door, and the little white dove flew in. Thank you. Come and sit over here, Mr. Lee. I, uh, I hardly know how to begin what I have to say. Uh, Mr. DuPont sent for me and told me what I was expected to do, but I, I almost exploded. My position is most embarrassing. Perhaps I can make it easier for you. Yes, yes, you can, Miss Lee. Mr. DuPont gave me this report concerning the fan mail of our various artists. Now, for instance, he is uh, Swanee Collier with 10,000 fan letters every week. And just think, he came up from almost nothing. And mine? Well, it seems that in the five weeks you were the white dove of La Paloma, your fan mail was practically negligible. Practically negligible, my dear. I realize they haven't had to hire a staff of secretaries to answer. And the worst of it is, the sales of La Paloma soap haven't been as great as poor Mr. Barber expected. In fact, they've shown considerable loss. I understand he's quite upset about it. I see. I hope you understand, Miss Lee. But I disagree entirely with both Mr. DuPont and Mr. Parker. I feel that we are kindred souls, Miss Lee. Yearning. Yearning for what the less artistic do not understand. Mr. Breton, are you trying to tell me that I'm fired? Oh, certainly not, Miss Lee. Not fired. I'm merely trying to suggest that you try something with a little more life. Uh, well, something syncopated. Something like the uh, Carter's compositions. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Breton. But I won't sing jazz for La Paloma or any other program. I won't be humiliated by Mr. Parker or Mr. DuPont. Or anybody else. <clears throat> You're making it very difficult for me, Miss Lee. I'm sorry, but you're... Um... You needn't be. The truth of it is, I'm fired, isn't it? I'm afraid so. Well, I'm glad. I'm terribly glad to get away from all this cheap commercialism. It's far beneath my talents and my desires. So, good day, Mr. Breton. Goodbye, Miss Lee. <laughs> well, Amanda, darling, I wish you'd tell me what this is all about. I might like to cry, too. Oh, Dixie. <laughs> I've lost. I'm fired. <laughs> Don't kid your poor old grandma. Mr. Breton told me that my La Paloma broadcast was a failure. I'd have to sing jazz or get out. Of course, you wouldn't think of singing jazz. Not for all the tea in China. Not even for coffee and donuts. I'll show them. I don't nation in New York. Of course you don't. You can always fall back on your stuffed shirts from Park Avenue. 
Gregory Du Pont said, Carmel Prevost will put you where you belong. But for Pete's sake, don't have anything to do with such low brows as Swanee Collier. What's Swanee Collier got to do with it? If I told you, I don't believe you'd understand. I'd give my right eye if Swanee Collier cared as much for me as he does for you. But he never said anything to me. Stop in and say an oculus. A good pair of glasses, honey, might change your whole outlook on life. Hello, Gray. Hello. Won't you come in? Thanks. I was awfully sorry to hear about your blow-up. Don't be. I heard about it down at the studio, so I thought I'd tease over and see if I couldn't cheer you up. That's nice of you. But the truth is, I'm quite relieved. So am I. But why? Are we alone? Dixie's getting ready to go to the theater. Well, in that case, I'll postpone explaining it to you until after she's gone. Do you mind if I have a drink? Not at all. It's right over there. That's the old hospitality. Shall I fix one for you? No, thanks. Well, if it isn't the gentleman from Park Avenue. Off you do salutations, Dixie. Won't you have one before chasing off to uh, charm the weary men of finance? I've never believed that cocktails add to one's ability to charm. We evidently don't agree on that score. On every score, I believe. Keep your chair now. Don't forget what I told you. See you later. Why does this hostile attitude towards me? It isn't you. She thinks I'm all wrong for wanting to accomplish something big. Something worthwhile. Well, at least I agree with her in one respect. I don't believe in careers for women. So, you're another man that believes every woman should settle down and raise a family. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. In fact, as a choice of the two evils, I'll always take a drink. Here's to ourselves. Together. I said I didn't care for you. We should have some music. Now, come on, dear. Let's have just one little note, huh? Am I getting fired? Why not? At least you're getting fired. Give me a chance and you will move it. A motive for what? For whatever we may choose to do. Please. Why? Because it seems so cheap and vulgar. You are a hi-hat little devil, aren't you? Hello. Mr. DuPont, just a minute, please. Gray, someone calling for you. Who could be calling me here? Hello. 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 There was a gentleman calling you. It's okay, Miss Prevost. Thanks, Joe. I'll go right over. You are Miss Elanda Lee, aren't you? Yes, I am. That's what I thought. My name is Carmel Feather. How do you do? Won't you come in? So nice of you. Well, Greg, won't you sit down? No, thanks. May I ask why you've come barging into Miss Lee's home in this manner? You keep out of this. I'll settle with Miss Lee whether you like it or not. And I wouldn't advise you to start anything. Because a couple of my friends are waiting right outside the door, and they might object. Oh, don't look so frightened, my dear. I'm not going to pull your beautiful red hair or claw your lovely hazel eyes or do anything so vulgar. I've merely come here to show you how little you really mean in Greg's young life. Shall we go, darling? I can't understand your acting like this, Carmel. It's not like you, really. If I'd have known that Greg meant so much to you, I assure you I would have never hurt you like this. Huh. I'm not hurt much. You see, I thoroughly understand Greg. Poor boy. He's always getting mixed up in little affairs like this. But when he cools off, he always comes back to me. How horrible. Coming, Greg? I am not. Are you sure? Perhaps I should remind you of the time. Very well. I, I'll go with you. I think we've embarrassed Miss Lee quite enough for one day. Sweet of you. Anything to keep out of your silly melodrama. 
I'm sorry about all this. Well, that's quite all right. Come on, dear. Shall I call you? I don't care. I'll call you. Sorry to have spoiled your little game, my dear. But perhaps by now you realize that several streets intervene between Park Avenue and Broadway. And now radio station WMDB presents Fireside Melodies, featuring Bob Carlton's orchestra, Madeline Collette, Swanee Collier, and a host of others. We present first that talented young singer and composer, Mr. Swanee Collier, singing his most recent song hit, My Radio Rendezvous with You. <laughs> I never ring your doorbell As your other lovers do I just call the air To where you are And there is my radio rendezvous With you My arms may never hold you As your other lovers do I just whisper in your little ear, come close to me, my dear, to my radio rendezvous with you. It may be better this way, now I can say all of the things that fill my heart. Let's pretend you're in my arms, and you and I together dancing in the dark. My lips, as your other lovers do. But here, my dear, you're mine. Your radio's my shrine. My radio rendezvous. I took the job. I planned everything just for you. 
Come on, you're going to prove that you're not a flop, that you're not a failure. We're going to show the world that you've got exactly what it takes. Ronnie, I can't do it. I just haven't got the nerve. You've more courage than any girl I've ever met. You're not afraid of this little job, are you? Hey, Ted. Maybe this is all here. You bet we're raring to go. Atta boy, now don't forget, make it plenty hot. We'll burn them up, Mr. Collier. Great. Hey, Connolly. Yeah? You all set? All set and ready to hatch. From the eggs we've got walking around this stage, we should be advertising an incubator. Speaking of incubators, I just saw the dove fancier Parker rushing into DuPont's office. And take it from me, from the frost upon his handsome brow. It's going to be a long, hard winter. If this brainchild of your disordered mind don't go over with a bang... Don't worry about my brainchild. Just don't stumble over your announcement. Don't worry, old man. I've got announcements covering everything except our getting fired. There's only one thing that puzzles me. Who is this unknown prima donna that you're so mysterious about? You'll find out. Well, am I supposed to say the next number will be sung by Madame X? Or has she got a name? She's got a name, all right. And here's your introduction. That's not to be open till she walks in here at the start of the broadcast. Seven more minutes of suspense. She'll be here, all right, and right on the dot, too. Taxi! Taxi! Taxi, ma'am? That's your service. Oh, Just a little girl about to catch the next train out of town. Where to? Atlanta. Okay, miss, step right in and I'll drive you right to the station. No, thanks. I'd rather take a taxi. Oh, no, you don't. Not while Gregory you punch you, you can drive a car. But I don't want you one. get right I... in there, my young lady. <laughs> now, why go back to Atlanta? Because I'm sick of New York. I've made a mess of things ever since I've been here. And I'm going back to the stick where I belong. Oh, uh, if you just think it over a little bit, you might change your mind. How about it? I'm afraid nothing can change my mind, Craig. <laughs> taxi! Taxi! About 30 seconds to go. Oh, where's Mr. Collier? I guess he's trying to find his prima donna. He hasn't showed up yet. Well, here we go. Up and over the floating town, wash your little hand in every house. The little white body every day in the week, and then go dancing cheek to cheek. Lop and over the sandy so Feels the romantic soul with home. You land it from your head to your pretty little foot, and all the boys will say hi, just. Papaloma Jubilee! Something new, something different. A musical crazy quilt presented for your entertainment and confusion by the Lavaloma Soap Company, makers of the soap for the personality. Featuring such radio non-entities as secretaries, telephone operators, char women, janitors, elevator and office boys, and a host of other overworked and underpaid employees of the world's largest radio station. This musical hodgepodge is written and staged by your radio favorite, Swanee Collier, and brings to you an entirely new radio personality, none other than that beautiful, that glamorous, that extremely talented peach from way down south, Miss Elanda Lee. I demand an explanation. This is unheard of. It, it's un unthinkable. Mrs. Parker, it's just as much a surprise to me as it is to you. But I'm sure that Collier knows what he's about. What'd you do with her? What did I do with her? You better ask what Greg Dupont is doing with her. Oh, come on. Don't keep me waiting. The program's on. She's got to be here. Well, calm down. I'll tell you what little I know. When I came home a little while ago, Alanda and Greg were driving me away in his road. Police headquarters, quick. Dixie, Greg's roadster is the one with the license 99, isn't it? That's it. Police headquarters, I want to report a kidnapping. 
Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Central broadcast number 72. Report on a kidnapping. Kidnapper last seen driving Pam Roadster. License New York. Nine. Picture nine. Don't take any chances. The man may be armed. The next number is what you might call the teletype trio, effectively rendered. And when I say rendered, I'm not being overly pessimistic. The number will be rendered by none other than Peppy Downey, our wrong number expert. Our two companions in this musical crime are executive lap sitters, Dolores and Yvonne. <laughs> all about? I can't stop to tell you now. Just keep the program running. We'll be back as soon as possible. Just leave it to Nelson Connolly. This program run off so smoothly it'll practically slide off of the ether wave. Thanks, old man. Let's go. <laughs> some idea of what it is that makes the wild game of Africa so wild. None other than our irrepressible head handy band, Mr. Congo Max Rosenblum, will lead his stout-hearted vocal gymnast in a number which they will sing without the aid of any mechanical device. Thank you. It does not seem strange while be so deep and low. Mad black beast must be the Congo. Oh, 
a little fast, aren't you, mister? But please, officer, we've got to get back to the studio. Yes, we're in a hurry. What's the matter? Is the studio burning up? No, but we're on this broadcast. Listen. Calling all cars. Report on a stolen car. Where do you think you're going? Why, I was on my way to my place in Southampton. Is your name Alanda Lee? Why, yes, it is. What's your name? I'm Gregory Dupont, Jr. You can't get away with that stuff. I have told you we were warned that you were posing as young Dupont. Now come clean, and you'll make it a whole lot easier on yourself. But I am Gregory Dupont. How many times do you have to be told? Oh, a tough guy, huh? Well, that's this young lady who I am. She'll tell you. What about it, miss? Why, I, uh... You can't do this to me. Oh, yes. You can't. Get out here. I see. Alanda! Oh, where? Thank heaven we found you. Oh, Alanda. Just a minute. Well, Collier, what brings you here? I, uh... We just sent him and that uh, young woman in a stolen car. Nonsense. I've known Swanee Collier too long to believe he'd steal anything. Look here, Sarge. I've got to get back to the studio. I've got a program on. Miss Lee is my star. Someone kidnapped her. I grabbed our sponsor's car to try to find her. Wait, Macro, we've got to be there in ten minutes. Can't you let us out of here? We'll come back after the broadcast if we have to. I don't think that'll be necessary, but we'll have to hold the car here until we get this thing straightened out. Well, we've got to hold them on the charges, don't we? I'll take the responsibility. Thanks. That's swell. Come on, Melinda. This is your big night. Hold on to him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Collier. You know this bird? Well, I never saw him before in my life. Why, we can't do that to him. Oh, yes, we can. Come on. A calling was weeping away. I stopped to inquire for her sadness. Use Lapaloma soap and save up to a cup full in every bag. Now I may tell you that we had hoped, to... but while looking through the back alley for a couple of romantic chats, we found this office Caruso, this white collared male galley curtain, <laughs> sitting none other than our charming and talented program director, Guinaldo Breton. I got to rid me, bring it with me the loveliest way that ever I heard. Give it that easy, watch me swing it. Come on, babe, sing it. I got to do with the groom. Eeny, meeny, you give the eye to shut your fingers. Let's go to town, you Jones and Ginger. More fun things than that. I got more room than your table can be. Ba-boom, ba-boom. I got to rid me. Ba-boom, ba-boom. Swing it with me the loveliest way that ever I heard. Ba-boom, ba-boom. Give it that easy. Ba-boom, ba-boom. Watch me swing it. Ba-boom, ba-boom. Come on, babe, sing it. I got to do with the silver groom. Ba-boom, ba-boom. Eeny, meeny, meeny. You give me. Here, sure. How's the show been going? No hits so far. Don't sure worry about that lead, eh? All right, you just let me worry about that. Get out All right, I got more room than your baby can be. Here comes the junk man. Give it that wham. It's a lovely little room. Stand back in the room. 
Mm. How's that, Soot? Radio friends, allow me to present for your admiration and delight our Georgia Peace, our Lapa Loma Girl, our own Atlanta Lee. This is about the last war, the end. I am devil. If you've got rhythm, well, I've got rhythm. If you got all, what you gonna do with it? If you got love, well, I've got love. What you got, I've got. If you've got your, and I've got your, but I don't know, I'm busy learning. If you've got wham, and I've got wham, what you got, I've got. I'm the boss in the champagne bottle, I'm the topic of the song. Baby, the way it's got one of the things, make that music go round and round. If you've got hands, and I've got hands, you got gold, and I've got gold. You've got time, well, I've got time. If you've got, I've got. You did it yourself. I only helped you see things a little differently, that's all. But isn't that everything? Well, I can think of a few more things. Congratulations, Miss Lee. Thank you. You too, Swami. Glad you like it, then. Well, what's the difference whether or not we like it, so long as it does my La Paloma soap? I knew I wasn't wrong about my little white dove. <laughs> we won't have a talk with you, young man. Yes, sir. Mr. Parker wants to know if you consider signing a new contract to produce these programs. Now, I'm a man of few words, but this means a lot to you. Think of the money. Think of the prestige. Think of the... the... Thinking of one thing, sir. If you want me to produce this show, you'll have to write a new contract for Miss Lee. Well, well... Oh, I think that can be arranged. Miss Lee, would you consider signing a new contract? Of course, it would mean a substantial increase in salary. Well... Of course, Miss Lee will sign. Provide... Well, well... You're on back, Mr. Carter. Don't go away. We'll see you right after the broadcast. Congratulations, my dear. And so, radio listeners... We give you our composer and director, Wally Collier. Now that we are all alone, there's hidden love I've never shown that I must make known to you. My poor heart is fluttering. Can't you hear it uttering? What I want you to do Melt in my arms Suddenly surrender Melt in my arms You will find them tender No need to worry Just hurry and melt in my arms Trembling with emotion, look at 
my eyes. Humble with devotion, Father, I adore you, implore you to melt in my eyes. When your lips are near mine, please hear mine. It's clear mine are only wanting your tears. Listen to their pleading. It's your lips they're needing. So can you grant me this? Melt in my arms. What are you afraid of? Give me your charms. That's what love is made of. For once you're willing, it's thrilling to melt in That's what love was made of. Oh, I'm sure we'll 